Healing Hands Health Society presents Dental Webinar Series. We have planned a series dental webinars to keep you abreast of current practice. This series on prosthodontics will be via Zoom, Facebook Live. Presenters are drawn from dental schools in the USA, private practitioners from around the world. To register for future webinars, visit www.hhands.org backslash dental dash training. For future inquiries, contact facilitator to talk and putting all these great speakers to to share and at this time where you're not leaving home much it's it's a very nice thing to do so let me start sharing my screen here so i put a presentation today when i talk about um 3D printing in restorative dentistry, and um, the goal is to show you guys um, what we can be do, what we can do with this technology, and how this this is helpful, not only at high end uh, and very expensive procedures, but also to to make affordable and reachable for for so many areas that doesn't have access to to care. Sometimes I mean. Working with all this technology, I've been able to work with a lot of friends and collaborators from from Brazil, where things are sent to me online, and I can work here, send back. Then they can fabricate there, or I can fabricate here, mail to them, and they can they can do uh, things there. So that wasn't so easy and possible a few years ago. So. I'll talk a little bit about the role of digital workflow in restorative dentistry, talk about 3D printing processes and how we manipulate or work with the files to, to be able to do more of what we have to do. So, so the workflow in restorative dentistry and in prosthodontics used to be a conventional impression, having stony model, then you have a wax up, dental cast and then you go to conventional um, crown bridge fabrication rpd fabrication all of that later they start with intraoral scanning but they were the first serac in the 1980s were mostly for inlays and before the intraoral scanning became so popular the desktop scanners got a, a really good advantage and, and they start in the dental laboratories very soon so by the time you take an impression, send to the lab, they put the cast, they, they, they were able to then start scanning the cast and then do um, meal or print wax and cast and do things more digital. So even though we don't do much of the digital dentistry in, 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 in the dental chair, the laboratory has been doing this for, for a while longer than, than the, the, dental, the dental offices. Then later, the intraoral scanners became were more accurate, they, they, they expand the capacity, the materials got better, and then the scanners got better, and prices have dropped uh, significantly, and things are, are really expanding. I mean, you can have different scanners, you can, you can use for, for different uh, means, and in the end, you can go from a intraoral scanning to have a final crown in a few minutes, not more than an hour, or you can use it to make dentures, bite splints, uh, temporary dentures, and it's just expanding how much you can do with this technology as things continue to to progress. So right now, all these digital tools have been used in restorative dentistry, endodontics, auto maxillofacial reconstruction, surgery, I and mean, for planning, for big grafts, and how to remove a graft from, from, from the fibula, to, to cut it to the right size, to have it cut it and, and properly angled and rotated to when you, you bring to the mouth, it, it fit there just like a, a perfect fit and you don't have to do uh, so much trimming and cutting and fitting and make things way significantly faster for, for a process that's already very, very time consuming. Yeah. Yeah. Dental implants, surgical guides, implant planning, all that became a very, very popular use for digital dentistry. Uh, other areas that are 
they are not so oriented in that area also have been using more and more. I mean, if you think about in a periodontal practice and you have teeth that are mobile and you want to do a scan, you can compare how those teeth are behaving over time. If you did grafts and you want to make sure that the graft working and show the patient that here is the gain and all those things, that, that can be easily accomplished using all this technology. And usually the, the periodontist will be the one doing the implant. So if they use the technology, they're going to be using that for implant planning as well. Pediatric dentistry, uh, it's also very interesting use for, for intraoral scanning because you can maximize time when you're trying to get a child to sit in the chair and take an impression for appliance or for uh, crowns or other procedures. I mean, it's much faster if you can scan. And again, the technology of the scanner is good enough that you can do this, this quickly, even when a child is moving around and not very cooperative. And orthodontics as well. I mean, you, the Invisalign and, and all the other brands of uh, invisible braces couldn't exist if it wasn't for the technology where you can scan, movement the teeth, and then from there you plan all your appliances for a period of time and, and things move and, and work as well as, as planned. And, and other uses of orthodontics that also uses digital dentistry for lingual braces and, and everything that is much more customized to the patient. So I want to start with a case that I truly believe it wouldn't be possible to do so easily and so much comfortable for the patient if it wasn't for the technology available. So this patient, she, I saw her back in August last year. Uh, she was 18 years old and she was just finishing high school and was about to start college. And when she, she, she was a baby, she had a tumor and that tumor in the maxilla affected the, the development. And she, even though she had most of her uh, adult teeth to erupt, they didn't erupt uh, properly. They didn't have, she didn't have good occlusion. And so she had scars from, from surgeries, noses deviated and new the smile. That's with bracing and how far they could get. Uh, with um, braces and trying to, to, to adjust her bite. And of course, she wasn't happy with that because she smiles, she can't, they can't see her teeth. And the vestibule that she has on the front, on the, on the two central, is about the cervical margin of, of the central. She doesn't have any vestibule beyond that. Um, so the plan was is to extract the upper teeth She's going to have graft and implants and then a fixed prosthesis done later. So by the time I saw her, uh, they asked me to help with scanning and designing a denture because she's going to have those upper teeth extracted. Um, and then a maxillofacial surgeon did the extraction and one of our faculty in the department is doing the deliver the denture and is doing the final restoration after the implants are healed. Uh, so we scan. I brought her to a, the scan file to a software, and this is how deep I could get from the vestibule on the buckle and on the sides, and that's her occlusion. If you think about a case like this with braces, I mean, you can't take an impression. If you try alginate, you can't take because alginate is fragile enough to, to break, but then it's not going to be a good impression. Everything is going to be distorted. Um, if you try with PVS, you're going to get locked in because you can't really take it through the braces. Of course, you're going to have to take the wires out, but still it's going to be a very challenging situation. You, you can put wax and everything. Plus, with all the scar, you assume she doesn't have a very large opening. So taking a tray in and out and see how the retractors, the, the small side barely get something open. So with the digital scanning and the intraoral scanning, that's her occlusion. We go to the software. This was used, we're using a free software. It's called Mesh Mixer. I'll show later. We delete the teeth as you simulate a virtual extraction, but at the same time, I'm maintaining her existing occlusion, her vertical dimension, everything is maintained here. So then we took the files to the tree shape software with the, the dental laboratory one that let me design a denture. And here we can overlap the photo of the patient to the to the teeth and see how 
get an estimate because I'm overlapping a 2D image of the photo with the 3D teeth. So it, it, it looks a little bit more full mouth than she would be because the teeth has a curvature or the photo doesn't have the curvature. So it looks a little weird, but it gives an estimate. And from there, we designed the denture, have it ready for printing. And we went from, I saw the patient for the first time. It was like a, a 9 a.m. appointment. By the time this denture was ready for printing in this stage here, it took me about 90 minutes. As I was doing this, one of the first cases I actually had to do it myself on the software and explaining to, to my colleague what I was doing, showing him the, the, how we delete the teeth and explaining step by step what we were doing. Then we print the denture. The printing takes a little longer because the printer depends on the, the technology we have. They will print faster or they'll print a little bit slower. And in this case, I printed the denture as one color. And then we use pink resin or pink composites to characterize the buckle to make it look like you know, a denture. The printing, I'll say, take about two hours because of the, the printer we use. But... Um, there are printers nowadays that can print this denture in about half an hour. And in this case, we use the Form Labs Form 2 with, the, with their denture teeth resin. And the good thing about this, I can print one denture, two dentures, three dentures, five dentures at once, and then have like a, a backup or something happens, I have a copy. Or if I print one today, patient sometimes later call me, oh, I had something I forgot, I broke, I had an accident. We can always reprint. I don't have to go back and come here. We take another impression. We have to do this, this all and over again. So we can use this as a very quick and very easy and relatively affordable uh, way to to rehabilitate those patients in a in a temporary or in a provisional fashion. And this is the patient right after the the surgery. Okay. I don't think you can hear my sound. One second. Is everybody listening okay? Is the sound good? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So this is the day of surgery. She just got the, the, the teeth extract on, on that day. You see how she's swollen. And still the denture has a good fit, good suction. One. And then this is a one week follow up when things got, start to heal and how the teeth look like now that she's not swollen anymore. And she liked the teeth, she liked the shape, the size, and everything. And then, then, then she started college, and, and she didn't have any major complication. They did reline the denture a couple of times. And then by the end of the year, she, when she saw Dr. Liu again, she, she, and she and, and, and him, they noticed that the, the color of the print teeth starts to, to change. And, and then in February, she came back again. We did another scan. We scanned the existing denture. We scanned her healed ridge. We, this, this denture had to be relined a few times because of the, the change to, 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 to the mucosa after the extraction. So we scanned the denture. Uh, we scanned the mouth. As I scan the denture, I keep her occlusion, and I use the scan of the mouth to then redesign a new denture pretty much keeping everything as is. I mean, we kept the same teeth design because she didn't have any complaint about that. Her main complaint was that the, the, the teeth didn't look as, the color wasn't the same anymore. And it was loose because she needed to re reline the denture several times. Now I'm, we made another one that fit Talking back in the tests. tissue. Mm -hmm. Come from one to 10 for me, please. One, two, three. And again, Four, if, you, five, if you can see from here, six, you can appear the denture has no flange. Eight, nine, and if ten. you think about a denture with zero flange to have retention like this, it's, it's pretty amazing. Talking test. Mm -hmm. So here are some of the images, and you see, I don't know if you can see the video in my background when I'm talking, 
Um, this is the printer we use, and we, here we can print several denture bases at a time. Here we have uh, four sets of dentures for eight bases. In this printer, when I print this many in this vertical orientation, it takes about 10 hours to print all this. But it's a very reliable printer. I know that if I put this to print at night, I come back in the morning, that's how we usually do when you have to print things that take so long, we put it to print at, uh, at, at the end of the day and then leave and then come back in the next morning and hope everything printed okay. And most of the time, um, it works very, very fine with this. Right now, I had very few errors that I had to, to start over or lose something. And with one liter of resin that usually you buy those resins by the liter, I've been able to do 20 sets of dentures, more or less, um, which is a lot of dentures to make just the bed. Of course, I have to have a resin for the teeth as well. There's a lot of dentures to make with this amount of material. Uh, in the US, these resins cost about $400 a liter. Um, but Considering how you make this, I think it's uh, it's it's uh, it's very worth the the price in the US. I know in other countries things it gets a little bit more expensive because of exchange rates and, and all those things. But there are also alternatives from other places that may be cheaper than the the US version of those resins and printers. So this is a research we are doing with the university in Brazil. So we are designing the dentures here. We are printing here. And then we send it there either when someone goes home and I, I can give them a batch of dentures or right now when no one traveling, I may have to mail some resin, some of those dentures over to Brazil. We are doing about 60 pairs of dentures when the patient is having a denture from the intraoral scanning the mouth and scanning the, the cast and scanning the impression. And they will tell which one they, they, they feel it fit better. So all this is done based on the intraoral scanning. And as I said, we have intraoral scanners that varies a lot in terms of technology, speed, accuracy, and price. We have scanners that goes from $80,000, $70,000 in the US market to one that costs about $9,000. And $20,000, 20 to 30, 30 to 40. So the price varies significantly. Um, the bigger companies sometimes they have more technology accurate to the scanner but even in smaller companies and i mean i've seen a lot of people using this scanner and doing very very nice results getting very nice and good results this one here i haven't seen people using i've seen this company making other type of scanners that work pretty well so I, i'm confident you'll be fine too caddy stream also has a very affordable and a uh, well-known scanner that works good too. I think with the three shape and, and, and Sirona, the technology they have is ahead from many of the others. So the artificial intelligence, the time spent scanning, the, 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 the quality of the color to use for shade matching and all those things, it's, it's different from the others and they are ahead of the game and that significantly costs more compared to others. When you talk about scanners, it's important to know that they have to be accurate. When you talk about accuracy, we look at two things. We look at precision and trueness. And precision is how close that scanner it is to, to make a repeatable scan. So if I scan a tooth 10 times, the 10 times I scan that model, better say, they, they all have to be exactly the same or as close to be the same as possible. And trueness is how close to, to the original tooth or model or mouth that scanning will be. So it could be very precise, but it may not have a good trueness and then you'll be off or may have a good trueness, which is meaning that it's always, it's, it's faithful to, to, to the original shape I'm scanning, but if it's not pre precise, one time is good, one time is bad, and then things will never work as well. So it has to have both at a very good level. And again, this have improved a lot and 
getting better and better. And here you have what the precision will be. Doesn't matter if I'm hit bullseye or I'm out of the, the target, but they always at the same area. So it's pretty close together. But to, be, to have trueness, they have to hit the bullseye, meaning that I'm always hitting the, the target. And all, if I shoot 10, um, 10 arrows, I will hit the target with the 10. It may not be exactly the same time and hitting one over the other, over the other, but close enough, it's, it's accurate for most of our use. And another interesting thing that you have to look at when you're looking to buy an intra-order scanner is, again, as I said, have good trueness and precision, have good resolution to also capture high details and give, which is part of trueness and precision. Don't need to use powder because it's just uncomfortable and it adds another layer of uh, on a cell that could create error. Uh, be a fast scanner, so this way you, you maximize patient care and comfort because if you have to go back and forth, back and forth, um, people just lose faith. I mean, they wanna, they wanna feel like things are working fast and, and precise. Have a small tip to, to be able to, to fit in even if someone has very small mouth, like the patient I showed. Uh, nice to have good color, and the color are, are, are very reliable to, to the, the real color in the, in the patient's mouth, not only the teeth, but also the gingiva, which looks nice. Be an open system, so I can, after I scan, doesn't matter which software my laboratory uses, I can take the file from that scanner and send to to anyone I want. So usually it's an STL file. But I also have PLY or OBJ, which are also free uh, open format files that can be used in, in the different software. On the other hand, if the system is closed where the file only opens in that specific system, it makes things more difficult to collaborate. If you, are, if you don't have everything accessible in your practice and you have to send somewhere else, it may be a little bit more complicated. But it's possible as well. It's not a, a big deal anymore. So all this digital impression is very good and it's going to be very helpful in, in preparing and assessing the margin quickly if I'm doing a crown prep, making virtual models that can be finalized in, in, in seconds, less than a minute is, is, is very acceptable. I can make corrections, I can go back, rescan just that area instead of having to take a new impression of everything if I have to fix something. Of course, it's, it can reduce chair time. If I'm seeing a patient for an implant impression for a single tooth, I can have the patient in and out in about 15 to 20 minutes because it takes me just a few minutes to sit the patient in the chair, unscrew the hernia abutment, place an impression cap, scan, and, and put everything back to normal and the patient goes out. I mean, it takes literally, I mean, I can do it fast with impression too, but PVS still takes about five minutes to set, plus the mixing and everything else that it's also time consuming and make you gag. So you don't have that gagging effect as much unless I'm distracted and I'm scanning and I put the scanner all the way down the uvula or the throat of a patient, then I can make someone gag. It's a very nice demonstration tool, tool for the patient. They can see their mouth 3D in color. They can understand what I'm doing and I can explain better the record for talking to the laboratory, to the integration with the CBCT. Ortho is a very good tool as well. We also have benchtop scanners that the, the dental labs can use. So if you don't have the, the, the possibility to have a scanner in your office, you still can take an impression and work with a laboratory that has a, a scanner for modules. Then they can scan your modules and you can go using the technology from from, from, from there. And the 3D printer is the, is, the, is the newest part. I mean, we also have the, the milling machine, but I'm not gonna talk about that because it's, it's another, it takes about the same time and, and we talk, our talks about 3D printing. So it's the newest part where we are right now in this area here, where we have early adopters. And with all these COVID times, we, I think we have bumped this part a little bit. So. Everybody that is sitting home and not being able to, to work and, and so many live dental education, all those things going on at this time. I mean, people are really looking in all this technology and it's becoming 
very interesting that people are really learning and, and try to jump from early adopters to have it in, 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 in a current practice. And it, it will always become very broad use when you start teaching more and more in the dental schools because, I mean, people can graduate and learn how to do a lot of advanced stuff. But if they learn before graduating, then they graduate doing that. I mean, they, they know stone and cast and, and vibrators and how to take in practice and everything. But if I have the luxury to, to then scan and print a model, I'd rather use that because I know it's going to be faster, more accurate, and, or as accurate, depending on the case, and just easier for me. There are ways where you can go from scanning a model uh, scanning the mouth to have a, a model printed in about 30 minutes. If you think about taking an alginate impression, disinfecting, putting the impression, letting the stone set, unless you use slurry water, you're not going to get it in a, in a type 3 or type 4 stone set in, in 30, done from beginning to end in 30 minutes. So, plus, you don't have to, it's already articulated in occlusion and you don't have to go and do all these extra steps. So these are the, a huge number of printers available in the market now. I mean, they are not all meant for dental, even though some of them are, are, are sold and, and bigger companies make them like as dental specific. And they have a bunch of materials that are meant for dental use. And you have a printer that goes for hundred thousand of dollars, tens thousands of dollars, and one that goes for hundreds of dollars that not very uh, not the ideal use in the United States because the FDA has regulations for for printers and material that has to go combined but for other countries where the the, 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 the laws and the regulations for dental use works differently it, it's affordable and doable uh, that way this is the form 3 which is very common print, printer in the dental office this is the sprint ray that's also a very common printer in dental office too. And this one is the next dent, 5,100, which is also becoming very popular, mostly in dental laboratory because it's a bigger printer. And so for the form labs, you have resins for dentures or, or models, bite splints, uh, surgical guides, models, again, eat peach or gray, cast bowl, uh, denture base, denture teeth. There are also metal printers that people are now doing and using more for making frameworks for partial dentures, making frameworks for uh, implant restoration, metal. Zirconia printers are also becoming available that are that will soon become um, broadly used in, in dental in dental labs as well. And here a variety of materials that are printed. I mean, from models with soft tissue crown and bridge models, temporaries, bite splints, dentures, RPDs for casting, uh, trays for bracket bonding, bite splints. And the variety of printers depends on the technology you use. Mostly what we use in dentistry and are easy to use in the dental office is the SLA, where you have a liquid that cures the resin, a liquid resin that is cured by a laser or by a, a projector. The laser sintering is usually used for metal, for powder, so you can uh, melt metal powder to the shape you want. And they have the filament deposition or fuel deposition modeling, which is a filament that is, you can make models, they don't have a very nice finishing. They are very cheap, you can find one of those that costs $100, but they don't have a nice finishing and because it's, it's a filament that is melted, it, it, can, it, does, it also has porosity that if you use in dentistry, the decontamination is a problem as well. And the technology give, give an accuracy that could be good or bad depending on the technology you use, but most of the time, as you can see in those, in those videos, uh, you see one is printing layer by layer where the printer goes up and down, up and down, up and down. And in a matter of here, you have 17 minutes, 20 minutes, it's print the shape. And we have one that goes point by point. Accidents happen. And when they do, 
We'll be there. Initially conceived and funded from a you Kickstarter know, campaign point back point in 2012, the company was founded by a couple Every engineers. Excrete molten hot thermoplastics from an actual print. The completed object is slowly lifted out of the resin bath, layer by layer. As complicated as that I sounds, I checked out an early look at the model at a briefing last month with the Form Labs team, and it's actually very simple. Hey guys, here back with another video. Consumer. Today we're gonna do the review of any. <laughs> Sorry for that. And we have those fence printers, one that we have at the, at the university in the, in the engineering school that prints everything in color, different shapes and shades and all at once. Like this hand, this heart, this pineapple, all 3D printed. And the metal one, as I said, it goes for printing titanium, nylon, things that are hard and you have like a, a powder mixed with silica and the laser melts everything and the filament one as well. Here in, in the form labs, you can print the mandible from the CBCT. We can print the guide. You can print little parts that you use for surgical guide fabrication. Another video that we just saw. And here we, we saw that in, in, the, in the Chicago Lab Day a couple years ago now. Even this tennis sole or this shoe has been printed. On a, on, a, on a very high-end printer, but denture base, custom trays, guides, teeth, soft gingiva for, for implant model. As I said, in the US, the FDA has regulations that I have to buy not only the resin that is FDA approved for, for, for use in the mouth, but the resin is approved to use in a, in a specific printer. So I cannot buy a cheap printer from Amazon that I know I can make that resin print in there, if it hasn't been validated that that resin works, that printer and the cures in the proper way. So the FDA regulates how that has been tested to work properly. In other countries, as I said, it's different where the regulation goes other way that they, they can say the resin is biocompatible, it doesn't matter which printer you have. Uh, here in the US it's different. The printer and resin has to be validated together. Uh, research has shown that the printing temporary and the milled temporaries work as good as a PMMA one. In, act, in fact, they act had a better fit than the PMMA one because the PMMA will shrink. The margin fit better because of the shrink too. The printed one had better anatomy compared to the milled one because of the size of the burr. And printing can print things at 20, 50, 80 micron resolution when milling the burr will have at least a half a millimeter uh, or something on that range of, of a tip size. You can have dental softwares to do a lot of the, the CAD can that you need for milling or printing. But if you don't have access to all these, you can actually have free or affordable software that you can actually use to do a lot of those things. So this software is called Blender, it's free. And there is a person that he actually made a, dent, a CAD CAN dental software to run in Blender. You can actually download everything for free and make it work here. You're going to have a lot of headache because it doesn't work always as good as the paid one because there is a lot of IT support and people working in, in fixing bugs when you pay for a, an expensive software. When you buy some, when you use something free, you usually have one person that now and then he has the chance and the guy that made this one he's actually a dentist he works at the dentist so he he did this software this add-on to the software and when he was in dental school because he was a computer scientist and a dental school student so but now that he works i mean it's time not like you call the, the it support and say oh look this doesn't do the margin correctly but you can make it work if you have time and interest mesh mixer is also a very popular software that is not dental but people even made tooth libraries that you can actually use in here to use to make uh, teeth and make like wax ups and things like that. So just to show a case here where one of the dental students at the University of Michigan, he was working in this case and he wanted to wax these four incisors but the patient won a new crown, won a crown and he knew the teeth was Compromise the, the the roots were short and he he knew all the limitations but 
His other alternative would be to extract those four teeth, and he didn't want to extract those teeth yet. We also saw that this canine was crossbite, but he didn't care about that. He, he was more concerned about the shade and the, and the open bite he had with the four incisors. Right, a smile. So we took to the software, we watched those teeth using Mesh Mix, the free software I said. We print the model, we made the temporary crowns. So here how we design. See, this is the beginning. We wax, we print the model, we made a putty, and then from there he made the preps and later take impression, went to the to the lab. If you notice on the previous I even tried to uncross the canine, the cross bite on the canine, but he didn't care about that. He only he mostly cared about the four. He didn't want to spend money on the canine because the tooth was shade wise was okay. And then the lab did the final Emax round. And of course he was much happier than he was before. Another case from a dental student that we did a similar thing. Actually um, I'm going to jump to this case. Now, one of my students, when he was here doing his PhD research, we did all this using the free software for simulating a restorative case. He scanned his face using an iPhone app and used this jig here where he can actually relate his intraoral scan of his mouth to, to, to the face scan. And now his teeth look like to the face scan. You see, when, when you look to the side, it doesn't really have a good shape. So that's why he used that jig that sits in the front of his mouth. Because then he can align his mouth to this, and then he can delete his teeth from the, from the face scan and align his auto, intraoral scan with this jig to then put everything in his mouth like this. Now he has his 3D face with his 3D teeth. In a very good, in the very good, in the proper format and everything. So he then went ahead and he started waxing this six K9 to K9 because he want to see how it would look like if he decides to do some veneer to improve his aesthetics, which is fine. But you want to, we want to show and do that. So he did all the the alignment, face scan. He print the model with the new wax teeth, made up a, a, a putty tray. And the one that, so he's sitting in the chair, Raphael that's talking after me, is actually, he put the putty with bisacryl resin. And let it set. Now removing the excess, and then the patient can go home with this for a, for a few, for overnight, show the family, and then next day he can decide, oh yeah, I wanna do the veneers, I don't wanna do the veneers. Or if you're doing composite, I mean, things more like, um, doesn't have to be for veneers, that can be used for any, any purpose, of course. So before and after finishing the, the Bizacryl uh, simulation, statics. Just to finalize a couple of cases, in this patient, she had an implant placed on, on this lateral incisor here that was placed when she was a, a teenager before finishing uh, growth. And by the time we had to remove that implant and place a new one, we also designed a temporary denture that we designed using a stock tooth. We scan everything, we align everything, we print it. And by the time they had to remove that implant and place another and went wait for healing, she had a flipper, as we call here in the US, that was delivered the day of extraction. The flipper was used for about four months until the new implant healed. And I can, and I can make this flipper in about 20 minutes. From scanning the patient to have the, the flipper ready to print, I time myself to see how affordable, how fast, how, how we can do this. And usually it takes about 20 minutes to go from beginning to end. And then it prints in about an hour in my printer, but it could be printed in even less time. So you can even plan this as a emergency procedure, patient walks in, we do this in the same day and like we do a CAD-CAM crown as well. 
another case, I think that's the last one. That case was done by one of the another pair resident and Dr. CK, Rafael, did that extraction first and then Dr. Sommer did the implant placement later. So number nine will be extract. You see it has a inflammation here, has a fracture, um, has diastema, very hard to, to do with a fixed process. So it's gonna be an implant later. And that's when you're planning the implant. But as we knew of the day of the extract, you're gonna need a flipper in there. So we designed one. This Blue Sky software, this is free. And the only thing I pay here is after I design the, the denture, I pay for the export. And in the US, it costs about $20 to do that. The flipper was printed. We, we put it in one week after the extraction of this with the flipper in. The one in the bottom is with before extraction. The funny thing about this case is he called me about two months later saying that he went to the restaurant and he was eating, he took it out to eat, and when he left, he forgot to put it back. And they throw it in the trash. He called me and one day in the afternoon, I, I told him, come back tomorrow. And then when he came back to the next day, I had a new one printed and I gave it to him. What I do nowadays is I most of the time I actually print two. And I give two both to them in case they lost one. They already have a, a, a spare one. They don't have to wait to come and see me for delivery of the, the spare one. Then we plan for the implant, the surgery for the implant placement, following the guide to see how precise it went. We made a temporary, immediate temporary on the implant crown, as a short crown because it's immediate temporary, I don't wanna have overload, and Dr. Rafael is gonna talk more about that. Here I scan after the implant placement, and the white mark here is my planning of the implant from the design software. And I could see that my, my error from the crown placement was very little. The implant plan and the placement was a little bit more than of the crown was for this because I had a guide to hold the crown in place. The size is shorter because I made it shorter. But overall, the position of the implant to the planning was very, very good. And later he had the final crown delivered. I didn't like the dark shade here, and I told the patient that, but he was so happy in having a final crown, and he didn't really care about that. So instead of going back to the lab and trying to fix that, he decided to, that, and with, without that flashlight from, the, from the, the picture, it didn't really show that. One last photo I wanna show you guys too, is what you can do with all this technology besides printing teeth and, and all that you can actually use for very good tools for teaching, for planning. In this case here, a patient was in China and I never saw her, but Dr. Hongli Wang, he was gonna do the surgery in China and we, we planned, we designed the guide, we did everything in Michigan before he went to China, took the guide in and did the, the course in there. So in this case, we actually did the virtual extraction. So the tooth was here. We virtually, we segment the tooth. We then subtract the tooth from the model and we scan, we print both the tooth in one color, the model without the tooth in the other color, and you can actually put them back and forth and you can actually simulate the extraction, how you do in the patient. So as we mentioned, we, all the challenges we have in all this is the technology is, is new-ish. Students are still learning in the dental school, just very, um, not very profound because we don't have all this technology available in the dental schools yet. So it takes time to train everyone. It's all computer based. And if you have a problem with the computer, you have to work conventional way because you may not have, uh, the software may crash and you need updates and things may take longer and you may have to take an impression right away. It may be challenging to integrate all this in the dental office, in the dental school because it's expensive. It takes a lot of computer power, people power to, to install, to keep everything running smoothly. You have to, to understand a little bit about computer or have someone working with you that understanding all this. Of course, cost is it, and it's always changing, it's evolving. Every two, three years, they allow new machines. So it's, uh, that's the, the thing that makes people scared the most in, in, in investing now and then two years later, something much better comes up and then what do I do now? I know that by now, whatever is, is the current technology, even though two years from now, something newer will come, the current one, it's, 
it still is going to work well for the next five, 10 years. So you don't have to change every two years. Differently from three, four, five years ago when there was a significant change, now the changes are not so significant anymore. So it really makes affordable and worth to consider investing now. It facilitates communication. It, um, you can work on things right away, as I said. Even, even if someone is in Brazil or in Nigeria or in anywhere else in the world, if they have access to a scan, send a file, and I'm here, or you send to someone else, send to Yuvo. I mean, we can, we can do things from here, even though people are all over the place in, in, in the globe. You have all the files saved for the future. I can print as many dents I want for that patient if I know that things are accurate and, the, and his mouth didn't change. I can do all my trial surgeries. I can teach my students very well with all this before going live to the patient. Integrate with all the platforms. We integrate with CBCTs, with desktop scanners, printers, milling, and all that. It definitely reduces number of case repetition. You can try, you can, if I make a final crown, I can print a temporary crown, I can mill a temporary crown, and I can try it, make sure it fits before I go to the lab and say, you can make it now. Everything I know it's going to be good. It's very comfort to the patient. It gives good feedback. And again, this is the future. It's evolving. It's not everyone's using now, but 50 years from now, even sooner, there will be much more affordable and much more everyday practice than it is right now. Here are some links you can, you can see, have access to, to software, to learn how the softwares work, to learn from Dennis that does a lot of 3D printing, digital dentistry. Patrick Moore is the one that creates that CAD software for Blender. So if you follow him on YouTube, you're gonna see all the, the how, how to use the software and then you can start doing this if you have time and interest in learning how to do this. Christian Brennis, he made the, the, the 3D print, the, the teeth library that you can use in, in Mesh Mixer. And it's also in the Patrick, in Patrick software uh, and other people here that have a lot of knowledge and, and nice videos showing and teaching how to work with 3D printing, digital dentistry in general. That's it. If you guys have any questions, feel free to mail me i hope i didn't talk too much and too fast and i kept you all interested and if you have any questions feel free to ask all right thanks. Oh, let me just play one quick video you was gonna take two minutes go ahead, go ahead. Um, so this is after i print the denture as you as you i forgot to mention we print in two colors usually because we have the pink nice and the whole palette and everything and you have to actually glue them together but the process of gluing, you are actually bonding, you're using the same resin that you printed and curing with the same light or laser, light, that's UV light that you was using to, to, to cure. So you actually, the bonding between the parts, it's, it's as it was the same material. And you see here, I have the same resin for printing. I take a little brush, you apply over the, the sockets. And the cool thing is about designing a dent like this. I go from having my models scanned or my mouth scanned in occlusion to have a denture ready to print in 20 minutes. And mostly it takes longer because sometimes the software goes so slow that it doesn't, um, as you see here, it just kind of starts um, stumbling. So, and then we brush, we, we clean up the excess. I take a little UV light, like a little flashlight. I cure quickly to hold things in place and then goes to the final curing that takes about half an hour or so. And then you have to do all the, the finishing, post-processing, removing the support and things like that, which is all, it's time consuming. But if you think about making conventional denture, it's definitely a game change situation in terms of time that, that you take. The disadvantage is that those printed dentures, they don't last as long as a final denture yet. Because the materials that we have, especially for the teeth, they change to, they, they tend to, to lose shade and start to, to stain. But eventually they're gonna get better. There are ways where you can actually bond 
prefabricate teeth and then you have a better aesthetics, which is good too. But sometimes you, you have to change so much on the teeth to make it fit in the arch that then you have so much time adjusting. But you see how easy it is in the form labs to remove the support and have the denture kind of ready to, to polish. Now that's it. <laughs> there you go. All righty. Thank you so much. Uh, um, I mean, for those uh, students in um, Nigeria, Ethiopia, um, this is going to be part of the online course um, uh, for the laboratory uh, portion of what we are planning. So uh, you probably want to watch this video again. It's going to be available on YouTube um, and, and download. Try to download the mesh, the mesh mixer software. It's something you can do a plan. I mean, this is the first stage to getting yourself, you know, involved. You need to be comfortable having it on the computer, planning it, and uh, that's where it starts. Somebody had a question. I'm just going to ask that question before you leave, Dr. Mendoza. Mm -hmm. um, the question here, uh, uh, can you see the questions? Is yeah, yeah, I saw. I mean, I saw one, right? 3D, 3D printing technology, is it the same as CAD CAM? Yeah, I mean, CAD CAM is the whole thing. It's computer aided design and computer aided manufacturing. So the 3D printing is the additive manufacturing, where I have a liquid resin or a filament or a powder, and the material is built from, from that tank that has the liquid, in most of the case, with the laser or the UV light. The, the other way to make a crown is the selective manufacturing, which is taking a block and mill where the, the milling machine is going to take a block and grind the, the excess material and make the shape of the tooth. So one is additive manufacturing, the other one is selective uh, add, um, additive manufacturing, and the other one is subtractive manufacturing. So they are, but they are all CAD CAM. The thing is, each one right now has different materials. So the subtractive manufacturing allows us to work with ceramics, uh, metal, acrylics, wax, pretty much everything. The additive manufacturing is mostly allowing us to work with resin, metal with more expensive printers, ceramics is at the beginning. Uh, there is only one or two companies available in the dental market for dental zirconia. But, um, but again, it's all using CAD CAM. Yes. Okay. All right, thank you so much. If you have any other questions, um, uh, please, I, I'm gonna send out a, a survey um, by, by tomorrow, I, I believe, once I get a question from Dr. Mendoza, um, just, just to test, you know, just post-test to see whether you, you know, you understood some concepts in the material. Anyway, we are going to move Healing on to... Hands Health Society presents Dental Webinar Series. We have planned a series of dental webinars to keep you abreast of current practice. This series on prosthodontics will be via Zoom, Facebook Live. Presenters are drawn from dental schools in the USA private practitioners from around the world. To register for future webinars, visit www.hhands.org backslash dental training. For future inquiries, contact facilitator 